All right, so we're plugging a tube that's either leaking or been identified with significant wall loss and installing an engineered popper plug into the tube sheet on both sides to take that tube out of action. Part of ASME's recommendations is to puncture the tube or completely cut it off to allow for venting and no pressure build up behind the plug, as well as validation of the plug once it's been installed. So there's no leak path past the plug from pitting or, or debris or corrosion. So dimensions on the drawing, we've selected the appropriate plug size, which comes with the no-go gauge in the box with 10 plugs. Each kit has a part number, material, pressure rating, and dimensions of what that plug will suit to the tube ID. With an extension rod that allows us to work through the inspection plug header to your tube sheet, we're gonna put the go no on, the go on first, through it, verifies that it goes into the tube. So we know that the minimum rating of the plug will go in there. We then change the go-no gauge around. And take a secondary check with the no-go side. That indicates that the upper range of the plug will still fit inside the tube and we're good to go to start brushing. CPI plugs have a big expansion range, so they come with a brush kit anywhere from three to six brushes, depending on how big the range is. You're looking at about 20 thou increments. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a brush which has a, the snuggest fit in the tube, an undersized brush won't remove any pitting or debris. And by using an oversized brush and forcing it in, you could break the stem. The other thing what we don't want to do is put it in reverse and break the bristles. So installing the brush on again onto our extension rod. And just with the battery drill. The brushing step is critical to make sure there's no leak path, the tubes are rounded to suit the plug size, and that we've mechanically keyed the surface for a better connection. What people tend to do is they try to force the brush in, which can cause um, deep grooves in the tube sheet or a tapered section in the, in the tube. Operators need to let the brush do the work, ease itself in, back and forth for at least 30 seconds on hard alloy tubes, including carbon steel. What we've got on the gauge here is the depth gauge to make sure that we don't go past the tube sheet area and start brushing out the tube. It's not gonna harm the process because we are installing the plug in the tube sheet, but it's just reducing any wear on the brush. Once we've brushed, we're going to use either a rag or air or a magnet to remove any shavings in the tube that have been removed from the tube wall to make sure that we've got a nice clean surface to install the plug.
Once we've brushed, we're then going to inspect the area where we've cleaned, which is in the rolled and expanded section of the tube where the plug is going to sit. Um, working through a header, if it's a short header like this, an inspector will be able to use a torch just to make sure that it's back to bright shiny metal. A deeper header, you may need to use a boroscope just to ensure that there's no pitting or leak causing defects. If there are, we're going to go to the next brush size up, remove the defects, clean it out and re-inspect. If we're happy with the finish, we're then going to go through the go-no gauge again, just to make sure that the brushing has not removed excessive debris, and we're going to the next plug size up. So, the no side doesn't go, which means that that plug is still within range for a successful install. We've now got the popper plug hydraulic ram, popper plug on the end with a plug positioner which basically shows us where the ring's going to stay and the reverse tape of plugs pulling back through. You'll notice that the arrow is pointing towards the plug. This is a critical step to make sure that the ring is sized to the arrow and when it breaks off there's a little internal collar that's caught inside keeping your tooling together. We have a depth locator, which is going to set the plug at our selected depth. In this case, you can see that we're installing it in the tube sheet where it's rolled and behind a team of groove. Plug goes in. On the back, we've got a safety lanyard in case it breaks off and the, the plug is not caught inside keeping the tooling together. As it recalls, operator stands to the side, making sure that they're not in direct line of sight. And we've got a hydraulic foot pump connected to an air supply. As the arm goes, What you've now got is the breakaway section on the plug side is sheared off at a correct pressure. If we were to get 7,000 PSI on the pump, we know that that plug has gone be beyond its working range and it's an undersized plug. So normally if it's got a bigger range, you may have two strokes on the ram, tighten it back up and have a second crack at it. 7,000 PSI is the main key. Other troubleshooting for an undersized plug, which could lead to leaks down the track, is if the taper has been stuck in your plug positioner. And if the breakaway is shared on the pull rod side of the collar and not on the plug side. An undersized plug is determined if it's, an if it's a smaller plug or if it's installed in the unexpanded part of the tube sheet will give you that pressure on the other side. The very last step of the installation process is to remove this breakaway point, leaving the plug with an open thread in the unit. If the head is small enough, you can use long nose pliers. A tech tip that we like to do is to use a pull rod with a bit of electrical tape on the end. So, same rod that's installed the plug, take the comp tube, plug, plug position off, put some tape on. All we're looking for is a bit of pressure onto that thread. So the reason we remove that breakaway section at the back to give it an open thread is in case we need to remove the popper plug once it's installed. The reasons for this include inadequate surface prep by the brushes and we do have a leak path after testing so we can remove it, go through the steps again on brushing it up and installing a new plug. Or if you need to re-tube the unit or take NDT on, on a portion of the tube down the track. What we've got is a slide hammer, basically an easy out tool 
with a spare on the end with serrations and a cutting tip. The spare is sized to your plug thread size and the ring size and it does have the dimensions on the thread itself on high pressure plugs what range it does as well as on the CPI plugs which we're using in this instance. So to remove the plug we're going to engage it wind the spear in until it bottoms out we've got two options here one is to use the slide hammer itself which is going to knock your tapered pin through or just a hammer on the back we've now disengaged the pin from your ring and with a shifter we're now going to wind the spear into the internal ring. It's normally about six revolutions. All right, so pin on the end, Bring the spear and give us a bit of reaching. Slide hammer it out. Removing a plug should take about 15 seconds. Rings on the spear, plug on the end, 